Hello, my name is Dr. Fatima Cody Stanford. I'm an obesity medicine physician and scientist at Massachusetts General Hospital and at Harvard Medical School. And today in this talk, we'll be exploring three pandemics, obesity, racism, and COVID-19. So you might wonder about the interplay between these three pandemics. How can I possibly put the three of those together? I think we'll explore that today. So let's first start with this talk of obesity. Obesity as a disease. And often when I say that word obesity, it's seen as a dirty word, but it's not. It is an actual disease process. And when we're talking about patients that have this disease of obesity, it's important to regulate or to notice that the brain is the most important organ with regards to regulating one's weight. It's not just about calories in and calories out. And so our biases towards persons that have this disease of obesity really need to stop. The first thing we need to think about when we're thinking about our biases towards persons that have this disease of obesity is the language that we use when we're talking to patients. Let's just eliminate the word obese. Obese is a label. Obesity is a disease. So we need to refer to people in a respectful way, a person with mild, moderate, or severe obesity, for example. In addition, we need to eliminate another word when we talk about persons that have this disease of obesity, and that is morbid obesity. As you might have noticed, COVID-19 has killed over 500,000 individuals here in the United States, but we don't call it morbid COVID. Also, we know cancer can kill you. We don't call it morbid cancer. Heart disease, another thing that can kill you. We don't call it morbid heart disease, but we continuously use the stigmatizing language to talk about patients that have this disease of obesity. So let's go back to obesity, the disease, controlled by the brain. And the brain sends signals to different parts of our body, to our fat tissue, what we call adipose tissue, our pancreas, our large intestine, our small intestine, our stomach, send signals back to the brain to tell us how much to eat and how much to store. And the hypothalamus is the most important part of the brain in terms of telling what we do. In terms of the different origins of obesity, genetics, environment, development, and behavior all play a role in a person's likelihood of having this disease. But what we do know is that is impacting us quite dramatically here in the United States and around the world. Over 42% of U.S. adults have this disease of obesity. Almost 20% of our pediatric patients, which are children and adolescents, have the disease of obesity. How can we grossly ignore such a large portion of the population? We must think about the adequate treatment of these patients that have this disease of obesity across the spectrum of lifestyle modification, behavioral therapy, medications, surgical interventions. We need to use the right tool for the size of the problem but let's stop stigmatizing patients that have this disease and let's go about doing what we can to treat them. It's important, it's important for disease, and it's important as we then go into my next item of consideration, which is racism. Now, racism has also been a word fraught with a lot of um, emotion. And we talk about racism and its origin here in the United States at the beginning of slavery 400 plus years ago. But I would like to posit that racism began well before surgery, um, slavery. Racism began when people started to recognize or believe that people were inferior because of the color of their skin. Often the darker the hue, the worse they had biases against that individual. But what we do know is that racism is indeed harmful to one's health. And as we think about this disease of obesity, we do know that racism itself actually contributes to the problem of obesity. Now, Dr. Stanford, what do you mean by that? What we do know is that everyday racism, racism and lifetime racism elevates stress in the body. When stress is elevated in the body, what that leads is to deposition of adipose tissue or fat tissue, often around our vital organs like our liver, our pancreas, our heart. When people experience this constant stress, their body goes into storage mode. It goes into a mode of 
wanting to protect itself. These elevation and inflammatory signals like IL-1, IL-6, TNF-alpha, MCP-1 set off this cascade of events that leads to more storage of fat. And indeed, in the Black Women's Health Study back in 2014, they reported that people that experience both everyday racism and lifetime racism have higher likelihood of obesity, particularly when we look at Black women here in the United States. So we've talked about obesity, we've talked about racism, we talked about how this leads to deleterious health outcomes. What we do know about obesity is that it often shortens life. It can increase the risk of death. And if that's the case, we need to be cautious about how we're treating people, particularly people from disenfranchised groups, people that belong to the group that I belong as a black woman here in the United States, as a physician, as a scientist, seeking to do the work to solve many of our ills here in society. And let's look at this COVID-19. This is a disease process that has disrupted our entire way of living, our entire way of being. There is not one person in the world today that has not been impacted by COVID-19. So how does this relate to obesity? How does this relate to racism? I'll tell you how. COVID-19 is an acute inflammatory process caused by SARS-CoV-2. That's the virus that actually we're talking about. It's a virus that has lots of spike proteins. And when it enters the system, and particularly persons that have obesity, where we see very bad outcomes, we see an elevation in inflammation, an inflammatory cytokine release that acutely happens. So what happens is we have this acute, acute inflammatory process interacting with this chronic inflammatory process that is obesity. And unfortunately, what we see is patients with obesity can sometimes die three to four times higher likelihood than those that don't have obesity. And then we wonder why. Because we have to recognize obesity for the disease that it is. For many of those of us that actually work in this disease process, unfortunately, this was no surprise when we began to learn about this COVID-19, the SARS-CoV-2 that has affected all of our lives. Yet people feel reticent to get vaccinated if they have obesity. They don't want that to be a reason for them to qualify for the COVID-19 vaccine. And that's problematic. But a lot of that has to be driven by the fact that they see their obesity as a failure for themselves, something they did wrong to cause them to have this disease. And while there is some personal responsibility in terms of things we can do to potentially treat obesity, it is not anyone's fault. And that is more reason why we need to do what we can to treat obesity. Why are people dying three to four times more? Why are they getting admitted to the hospital? Why are they needing ventilator use in COVID-19? Obesity, a major cause. So let's look at the interplay between those three. We're talking about obesity, racism, and COVID-19. And what we know is that the interplay between those three pandemics has escalated and has caused a major collision, a major catastrophe, one that we are capable as humans of treating if we tackle the root cause of the issue, the root cause of obesity, understanding the pathophysiology of the disease, the disease process so that we can better treat individuals that have this disease in a non-stigmatizing fashion. Racism. We should not treat people differently because of their race. That is not the judge of who people are as humans. It is a human, a person who happens to have a different hue or a different hair texture. That doesn't make them less. It doesn't make them inferior. It makes them different, unique, and a wonderful contributor to this human race that we have. And COVID-19, which has destroyed many of our lives, as we've sought to tackle this from a economic, public health perspective, we've recognized that COVID-19 is indeed here and is indeed affecting all of us. And what we need to do is think about how we can do better work to treat people 
treat people for that pandemic, but treat people for all three of these pandemics that happen to be here all at the same time. So let's look at how we can address obesity, racism, and COVID-19. With regards to obesity, there are people that are tackling this disease from a myriad of angles. Number one, we have obesity medicine physicians like myself, board certified by the American Board of Obesity Medicine to treat people that have this disease of obesity. If you are one of those people, then it's important and imperative that you get the care that you need to be at your happiest, healthiest weight for you. And so that we can reduce your risk of chronic inflammation associated with this disease that we call obesity. There are researchers that are investigating different strategies to attack this disease of obesity. And more and more is being discovered about the etiology of obesity and about our treatment strategies. But I can tell you one thing, we won't be successful with treatment unless you navigate it, unless you begin to utilize that for either yourself, your friends, or your family. Let's look at racism. Now that's a hard one. That's something entrenched in so much part of our bias. But I think one thing that you can do to see and check your own bias is to take the Harvard Implicit Association Test for race. See if you yourself have biases. And if you identify that you have biases, work to undo those biases because your biases will affect yourself, your children, and the people around you. So first, focus on self. And then COVID-19, that's something that all of us need to take action with. Make sure that you are practicing safe public health measures, wearing the mask even while vaccinated, staying physically distant. These are things that are gonna be important, but what's most important to really get this virus behind us is getting vaccinated. Making sure that you follow and learn what happens with your vaccine and how you want to make sure that you get the two doses, if those are the vaccines that you pursue, or one dose. And make sure that you stay safe and encourage others around you to do the same thing. So going back, we have obesity, we have racism, we have COVID-19, we have strategies to address them, but we need each and every one of us to be involved in this really, really heavy work. It's work that I've committed my life to. It's work that I believe is meaningful and creates significant change. I'm here to do the work, but I need you as part of the fight. Thank you.